We brought 20 different albums to the table today and we're going to go through each track list and actually call out the skips on these albums and let us know which songs are skips for you guys in the comments and subscribe if you're new to the channel. So let's get things started with Astral World by Travis Scott. Yes, sir. A classic in the community. And listen, bro, this is a roller coaster ride of an album. I Absolutely. feel like there's no weak segments within the project. Yeah, the listen is super good. I remember you telling me mm -hmm. that Butterfly Effect was kind of getting old for you. Do you still feel that way? Has it changed? I, I'll never skip it, though. Like, it, okay. it'll never get to that point. Good so, man. Because the thing is, is that you go through Butterfly Effect, that's not a skip. You know, the quality of the production is still fantastic. But uh, listen, I was on that song probably like a year and a half before when it was dropped in that three-pack with Amen and, you know, Green and Purple. So I had some time to live with that song. So I said, in the context of the album, I could see how that would maybe rank lower on my tier list but listen that's not the case with Alice World where for me but you know going into this track list songs like Houston Fortication or songs like Coffee Bean you know can't say uh there's just there's so much quality in this track list that I have it hard to find so no skip. skips at all no skips I, I used to have Yosemite as a skip and you know this yes and it's kind of changed for me but it was just that NAF performance like it just felt like this unhappy accident where he recorded his verse from maybe the parking lot of the studio and they cracked the window open to try to get his vocals recorded. And um, obviously they ended up fixing that for the mixing. Um, and but the vocals sound great, by the way, on that beat They too. sound better, but it's still an unnecessary feature. But the song is such a vibe. I it's not a skip. I find that a bad take. Listen, there, there's, I, I, there, there's, there's no skips I, on Astro Saying that Nav is not needed on Yosemite is fucking criminal. He's not needed, it, bro. It, that's come criminal. On. Dude, he actually has a really solid part on there. Bro, come on. How many? That song is memorable. He comes at the end for like 20 the, seconds, That, that song bro. is like, memorable because Gunna of and Trav had that on hold, I know, bro. Regardless, though, if Nav was not on that track, that track would have not gotten the praise it would have gotten. I in disagree the completely. And the conversation. Um, let's keep let's going. Keep on, on going. Those. Okay, so next, Heroes and Villains by Metro Boomin. This one was hard to call, man, because I'm being honest with you. It's like what, like a week and a half now that we've had it in rotation, and um, it's a super nice album from start to finish. That's the thing I feel like I didn't necessarily pick up on with first listen is that I'm having a joyride going through all these types of different productions, but I do have one skip, and it's towards the end of the track list, and it's still lock on me. Um, I just, and I mentioned this in the review, I just feel like when you're going into a Metro album, man, there's so many crazy fucking, you know, beats on this album, but it's maybe a bit more on the generic side. Not only that, but you're getting Travis Scott using the exact same flow that he was using on Niagara From Falls. From two songs ago. And Umbrella. So, so it was like so fresh and you're hearing the same flow again. And I'm like, do again. I really need that within the album? Listen, it's not for me. It's a skip in my books. Yeah, I have Lock On Me as a skip as well. I also feel like it's maybe the most generic sounding trap beat on the album. Like you have this looped guitar riff that just kind of gets silenced by those snare hits that kick in. Mm -hmm. So the production wasn't fantastic on there. And like you said, recycled flows. Future is kind of just mumbling some nonsense and I don't like his performance. It felt like a bit of a lazier performance. Couldn't find a pocket within that beat. And like there's other songs on here that I feel like are just average maybe where there's certain elements like 21 and Uncreepin' that I'm not huge on. But that's the only skip for me. One oh, skip. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a super strong track list. So guys, let me know in the comments section. Any skips on Heroes and Villains? But let's keep going on with this. SOS by SZA. And this one was hard to call because it's fucking 23 songs man she's been absent for like five years i now. loved it though and, and listen i love everything about this album but it was a very hard album to go through just because like there's a lot of emotional depth there's a lot of different production styles the features were fantastic but i do have one skip you want me to go for it i think i know what it is f2f f2f is I, a skip. I, I, I still me have, too okay i'll tell you why all right and the quality of the song is not bad. Like, you know, SZA's vocals are on point. I mean, you could say that guitar riff is nice, but it just feels like maybe SZA was a bit out of her element, maybe for that, like, song on the album where it felt like more of a pop attempt, and it kind of felt like a remake of, like, an Avril Lavigne song, in my opinion. Yeah, so it kind of I had that, like, it. 2000s grunge rock type of feeling to it, and when you're listening to it in the context of the full listen, it just takes you out of the album, bro. It, it you're does like, take you out of the album. This is so out of left but, like, field. like, you wouldn't be mad if this came on the radio. I feel though. like vocally as well, SZA isn't singing in her usual timbre, and I just feel like she kind of loses a bit of her identity on that song. It didn't really sound that great. I and agree with that. Even the, the next song following that wasn't my favorite because it also has a very acoustic-based instrumental, but wasn't a skip for me. So F2F is the only skip. And also, like, that whole concept of having, like, a revenge fuck to kind of get over her ex. Like, it's just, it's this explicit cliche of a concept that we've heard time and time the, again. The writing wasn't, like, wasn't especially great. when it gets into, like, romantic, like, sort of albums. I don't necessarily, like, nitpick like that well, sort of cheesy but concept. the writing on the rest of the album was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Yeah, so but like, it definitely stuck out for like me a was more thumb, of, for, for me, it was more of the identity crisis on that track more than anything. But let's keep going on with this. I got For Your Eyes Only by J. Cole. And if you guys know me in the podcast,
podcast, I mean, I've praised this so many different times. We got it in back right there. Absolutely. It's a super strong track list, but there's a skip. And I'm going to tell you that wow. skip. Wow. We spoke about this in the past, and there was never a skip yeah, for you. Well, folding clothes, bro. I'm being honest with you. Like, wow. If you, I guess if your you, opinion I, changed. If, if, you, if you had to ask me within like the context of the album and going from start to finish... It's very rare I'll listen to folding clothes like completely straight, at least in my opinion. I feel like it's not a must skip just because when you're going through like the way that the album plays out, it tells a riveting story where every song is connected and like yeah. you need to have heard every previous song to make the next song work and make sense. So the skip. So listen, I, I don't feel like you need to skip a song on this album, but I do have a skip and it is folding clothes as well. Okay, and there you go. To be honest with you, like I like the emotion that Cole brings in. It's kind of cute that he wants to kind of do some house it's chores nice, for the yeah, wifey. It's nice like setting play. But you know? I'll, I'll tell you this, like I feel like I couldn't draw up a more boring concept for a song if yeah, I even tried. It, it's, you know what snoozer. I mean? It's definitely like a I, I don't need to hear about like the laundry and the folding clothes that it's Cole has. It's on the bottom end of his catalog, and that's pretty yeah. crazy considering that this is one of the tracks on a super tight concept. Also, album, his you know? singing falls flat on that bridge, but the third verse is amazing. That's the one yes, saving that's grace. True. That is very true. Okay, so listen. For Your Eyes only does have a skip. I think we've agreed on everything so we've far. Been good like, so even far. the exact skip, yeah, we have the been same. Good so far. Next up, though, Call Me If You Get Lost by Tyler, the creator. And I love this track another list. case where there isn't a single weak moment. But I'll tell you this when I was going through that track list when yeah. the album first came out, I saw the song Lemonhead with 42 Doug, and I'm like, there's no fucking way this is going to work out. But I was totally wrong, bro. You're getting these crazy horns, you're getting these rowdy deliveries, and it just has that big boss energy of a song. So I love it. So for me, no skips. On oh, this. no skips. Plus, if you understand the writing and like the vision behind Call Me If You Get Lost, kind of the same situation with For Your Eyes Only, where you have to be locked into the concept of the album, right? And you have to be able to follow suit with the character progression that, you know, Tyler's portraying through uh, Mr. Baudelaire. And then after that, like just that whole love triangle that's going on. So even if like you wanted to skip something, it would be kind of hard just because well, at least I like What's your least favorite, maybe then? Not uh, a skip, but your least, least favorite. Least favorite? I don't really have anything on top of my head, to be honest with you. I, I like the whole track list okay. like from start to finish. It's, it's actually, it's a track list where I don't necessarily have like a favorite song. To be okay. honest with you, like I like going through a complete listen of this and I really do enjoy it. Like obviously I have my songs on there like Lumberjack that I like to bump on a regular basis. But regardless, for me, it's a start to finish track list. All right, let's keep it going with Section 80 by Kendrick Lamar. And this is interesting because it's an album filled with classics and it kind of formed my ear as a hip hop fan with classics oh, like yeah, ADHD, sure. Hole Up, High Power, so on and so forth. And Kendrick's always known for skipless albums, but this is not one of them. Oh, there's a skip here. There's two skips. On oh, here for okay, me. hold on. I, well, I know one of your skips has to be no makeup. Absolutely. That's for sure. Okay. So, but give me your other skip. What do My you got? My other skip has to be Tammy's song, which I feel like Kendrick's flow is a bit disjointed. It's a bit loose. Oh. I also feel like the only interesting part of his performance is that C murder interpolation that he does. But I don't know. I feel like he was kind of making light of a song that had a serious subject, which was like men cheating on their girlfriends. So it was a bit tone deaf in that sense to me. But. Talk to me about No Makeup, because I feel like that song was really poorly composed. When you're looking at the vocal arrangement, the duet between Alori and Kendrick, the way that they're cutting each other off oh and finishing goodness. each other's lines. Like, like it feels it choppy. Really, it, no, no, not only that. It's choppy like, as fuck. As you were saying, the biggest problem for me was Alori and Kendrick's chemistry on the song. It's completely out of fucking left field. You're getting this crazy jazz album soundscape throughout the whole album and then boom you're taken back to like fucking 2005 on the Disney channel and like you have to rip through this whole fucking song and uh, I, I get the concept of the song I know there's a deep missing like deep, the meaning, message deep message to it but concept and execution are completely two conversations yeah. for me and as you said it really wasn't executed well upon and I do feel like if I had to make a list you know start the bottom of Kendrick's worst to best songs this would be in the lower tier for me absolutely but let's move on now to so much fun by Young Thug and um, you know what I love this album I think it's one of the best trap albums to come out in the last couple of years but I have quite a few skips and the first one that I think we will have in common is going to be um, MGK with uh, with Ecstasy. Oh, this was going to be one of the best songs on the album if he this wasn't is a, on there. This is like a semi-skip for me because what I do when I'm running through this album, I'll enjoy the oh, song up halfway. until wow, the two-minute mark. That's crazy. Once I hear MGK crash the party, I'm fucking skipping, yeah, bro. Yeah, like it's completely out of nowhere, <laughs> but I think it was also kind of maybe a little bit of a, a little bit of promo thing because like they had gone on tour together and I think they were doing material at the time. And, and bro, you get so much fun. 
you're in that weekend of release, you're locked in, Ecstasy is in the top tier, my fucking songs that are playing that weekend, and then, bro, you go check your DSPs and shit, you see the one guy you don't want to see on that type of production, <laughs> and it's fucking MGK. Bro, tar- and, and listen, I, all credit to MGK, I know some people enjoy his music, but I will say this, it was not the move to put MGK and do that to him on Thugger that song. Thugger took an L uh, with that I'm one, sorry. bro. Like, the OG version yeah, was so much no, better, sure but not. other skips that I have, just to mention quickly... Cardi, Gucci scarf, a little Duke. Uh, no, that that's, cookie that's a, monster delivery. Oh, it's, it's fire, bro. It was okay it's on Harambe. Fire. It wasn't no. good here, bro. Oh, it was good. Um, like, Boy it, Back with Nav wasn't a good song. Circle tough. of Bosses with Quavo. I want to ask um, you. I, wanna, I bought her. I'm scared with 21 okay, Savage. So how do you call this one of the best trap albums of the past couple of years and have like six skips it has on it? six and a half skips out of 19. Uh, bro, we talk a lot about replay value. If this was any other album, you would be singing a very but different But the highs tool. are so high, bro. Oh, come on, man. Come you can't on. Have, you can't have realistically six skips. Sup, mate? Come on, bro. Uh, bro, what? The this highlights are so high. Oh, okay, you don't yeah, like you, Sup, mate? Oh, I thought you said that was a skip. No, bro. absolutely I was about not. To lose That's it. one of the biggest bangers. Okay, fine. That's one of the biggest bangers, bro. Come on. Come on, man. Yeah, but six skips I, yeah. I think i think you're being a bit too rough with it but okay let's keep going on with this what do we have we're next? now at the, the goat, goat by, by polo, polo g. g and honestly i have to give him credit on this album this was super well put together yeah um i'm not gonna tell you it's like the most like dynamic album that's ever released in the hip-hop genre but realistically it's a nice listen it's really solid from start to finish and i don't really have a skip on here like i don't feel like there's a weaker song in comparison to the rest just because like He's not necessarily taking himself too much out of his comfort zone. So, he like, is. you're not going to find anything too crazy yeah. and outlierish. So, like, you don't really want to skip anything, at least in my opinion. Absolutely, there's a skip on here. It's beautiful pain losing my mind. And you have this cool flamenco guitar that plays through. But, Production's nice. Um, production is nice. But I just, I don't go to Polo G for ballads, bro. And, like, he's singing on here. The auto-tune. Is he really, though? He is. The auto-tune's not great. And the way he was carrying out those notes, it just wasn't hitting for me. I went back me. to the track today, and I feel like it's more of, like, a melodic rapping performance performance more than anything it's like that middle point where you might consider it singing or rapping no, but he, he's singing he, at points in that song yeah um, but they're not too prominent enough to make me want to say like this is a bad song like it wasn't the greatest vocals i've heard but the melodic performances to start off the track were actually pretty solid um, another know? skip for me was be something a little baby okay that's um, interesting. sounded one. like he just like baby recorded his verse on like a motorola razor like one of those flip so you phones. didn't like the mixing of the vocals there? Bro, listen to that song he sounds way lower than polo g does like it's a big issue for me and they never ended up fixing it so um that wasn't great and uh yeah the engineer just said fuck it i guess on that one um next up though we have get rich or die trying by 50 cent and when 50 cent dropped this album it was like dropping a fucking atomic bomb bro like it was hit after hit instantly impactful still influencing artists to this day and you have street anthems on here he gave you club bangers he gave you some of the best true stories ever spat on wax so like why are you going to complain, bro? Oh, you can't complain. There's maybe this weaker songs like Poor Little Rich, but it's not a skip. It's not a skip. You Absolutely know what I mean? not. But you'll also find a load, and I mean a load, of beautiful content on the later, um, on the latter half of that album. Excuse me. Like, for example, songs like Wankster. Bro, some of my most played material off of that album to this day. And like you were saying, you're getting such a variety of, let's say, content matter, styles, rapping cadences, production styles that... You'll be constantly engaged throughout the whole track list, and it truly is, in my opinion, like I, I consider it a near flawless rap album, to be quite honest with I you. I think it so, is a flawless rap album. So, I mean, me. there can't be any skips on that, but let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Beer Bongs and Bentleys by Post Malone. And I feel like this is an interesting release for him because, um, you know, with Stoney, it was really hip hop and melodic hip hop influence, more cloud rap influence as far as the production choices go. Then you get Beer Bongs and Bentleys. It's kind of like the middle point between. You know, maybe Stony and Hollywood's Bleeding, where it's maybe half pop, half rap performances infused. And I will say this. The album is good when it comes to the hits on here. Like, example, Better Now, Candy Paint, Psycho, mm-hmm. Rockstar. Yeah. They're good songs. Zach and Codeine's not bad, Zach too. Zach and Codeine is nice, but I do have a skip on here. And that is going to be Taking Shots, Absolutely. Spoil My Night, and 92 Explore. Those I are my three skips. I have Taking Shots, Over Now, Blame It On Me. 
and Sugar Wraith. And I think Taken Shots is probably the worst one on here. He has like these brah ad libs that are really yeah, off. It's really off. Um, and he has like weird lines about like refusing to go to bed until he has a threesome. It's like, <laughs> sheesh, post, chill out, bro. Just fucking no, let him go to bed, bro. But I mean, let him it's just live. it's that type of song to shut down a party, but not in a good way. You know what yeah, I mean? That's your vibe with it. Yeah. Uh, but there's definitely skips on. And this it, album. it's one of those albums too, where it's like I'll never give it a full listen. Like I've done it a few times just to like review it and whatever else, but like it's I, never I it's never a full listen album. album no. no, but it's not a full listen album whatsoever. No. I agree with you. And going back to the album, I feel like it's poorly aged with me. I really did remember liking it more when it released. So who knows? Maybe personal bias, but let's keep going on with this. My turn by Lil Baby. Yes, sure. Okay, this is a lengthy track list, but I will say this. I don't have a skip on here, do wow. you? What do you got that skip? Um, yeah, I have Can't Explain, oh, which is no. a skip for me. Like, it's okay. Baby's like spilling it's his fire. guts on here. Like, it's fire. But he's giving you the rags to riches story, which he's given you a million times before, and he just... He has like this drowsy delivery, bro, that I just can't get behind. It was still quick on that song. Like it was still, it still kept me engaged. The production was nice. It didn't keep me engaged at all, Uh, to be honest. And going back to example, a song like "Emotionally Scarred." Let's say that's a great song. That's a great song. You know, I remember when it first released. I'm like, do I like this or do I not like this? Because I was in more of like my, you know, drip harder vibe where I really wanted to see Baby go harder. And "Emotionally Scarred" is a bit more on that personal and vulnerable side. Then I didn't know how I felt about the execution, but going back to the track list, especially this year ends up becoming one of my most played songs off of yeah. that album. And uh, so. Hur- Hurden and Solid are the other two skips. So I got three skips. On a 20-song album, it's not bad. You, you don't like Hurden or Solid either? No. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's very interesting. I really feel like it's a consistent track list. I don't really go through any skips. Zero skips is a fucking uh, but, steamy uh, take, bro. It is. There's zero skips on my turn. Well, even Plus, if someone told me there's five skips or six, I'd be like, sure. No, but this is a full album listen, though. I really... There's so yeah, much quality it is. on here. Like, like you'll, I said, you'll skip three out of shit, 20, you know? bro. It's not bad. No, that is good. That's a very good ratio. Okay, let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to We Love You, Tekka by Lil Tekka. And this is beloved by the community just because it has like this innocent fun to it, you know? Like Lil Tekka's having fun throughout it. He's even done like genius, genius interviews where he's just like yeah dude i don't do anything in my lyrics i just kind of like have fun and release music which i yeah like he embraces being like a cap rapper you know what i mean which is pretty funny but um it's interesting with this album just because we had done a tiktok on um you know do these albums have any skips and one of the main top comments under one of those videos was we love you tech as a skipless album got like fucking four thousand likes bro wow okay that's so i think for like the youth it's a really popular album but there's definitely skips on here and it kind of, of it becomes more of a thing where it's like when you're listening to this from top to bottom you reach a point where you're like he's recycling a lot of flows bro. and he's rec- he's recycling a lot. a lot of lyrics a lot of song concepts yes. and i get it it's not the point of the album it's just do you want a copy paste album? Let me go through my skips on this one, okay? Um, I want to go out of luck. Yes. Mo- Molly Girl is horrible. Me too. I have uh, Molly Girl. Count me out. And even the run from five to eleven is a bit weaker. Yeah. So I have, that's that's my list. So you have like four or five, I guess. I have three, but like five to eleven in any sort of scenario, I don't really see myself revisiting any of those songs. I have much. Count Me Out, Senorita, Molly Girl, Out of Luck, and Phenom, where he's like running out of ideas and does like the whole like tap flow from Nav. <laughs> that's sick though <laughs> like last uh, minute that's such you, a whack you, you're, flow you're at the end if you want to jack a flow make it a good flow bro. you no, know what I mean the top flow is legendary <laughs> by now <laughs> give him his credits where it's due bro no, all jokes aside though yeah I mean you're getting towards the end of your song and like you're kind of running out of ideas so let's go use a nav flow but regardless I do think there are skips on We Love You Tekka let us know how you feel about that in the comment section but let's keep going on with this championships by Meek Mill very present su- uh, surprise on the relist and I'm being honest with you bro this is a fuck load of consistency in here but i do have skips on this um one of them is almost slipped bro that song is really not good and even if you want more of a romantic ballad let's say on the album you have 24 7 with lma that's actually that's better a, that's much better so no i'm never going back to almost that's slipped. the only one that's my only one wow, I, I got four on here what so almost got? slipped is definitely one okay. over the top auto tune too much reverb and some really whack sex bars on there um apart from that splash warning which i know a lot of oh, people yeah? like really? with uh, roddy future and young thug it's not bad um, it's really, it's, i really it's didn't not... enjoy it future comes in with like the playful childlike voice that he did on king's dead it just wasn't executed as well on here um but roddy, i feel like it wasn't the setting for that voice either way you know yeah it but just it, didn't fit in i i do like all of their performances to a certain extent i'm not going to say it's one of the more stronger tracks off this track list because I could go through like so many different ones off of championships, but the Roddy one kind of maybe threw me off just a bit. You go back to it and the vocals don't sound polished, sounds almost a bit whiny. It's a bit, yeah. it hurts the ear a bit to also, listen to. Also, so. um, 100 Summers and With the Shits featuring Melly 
The, so I have four oh, skips no. in total. Oh, really? With the shits featuring Belly, I like yeah. that song. That was actually a you cool like song. that one. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's not a bad song. You know, like I'll never go through this album and like just skip it for nothing. You know, I really have to like not enjoy the song. To be um, able to amazing skip it. comeback album, though. Honestly, it was. It Meek really Mill was. really showed out and probably his best album from the last ten years. But let's keep on going now to one of my favorite R and B albums of all time. It's Trap Soul by Bryson Tiller. And to me, this is like just the perfect hybrid between trap and R&B. I love all of Bryson Tiller's performances on here. Even when he gets into his rap bag, um, he's flowing. And even his writing when he goes into his rap bag, rapping about how like Lil Wayne's The Carter Run had inspired him. And also the difference between um, making music when he wasn't getting paid for it and how the feeling of making music changed once he actually started doing it for a living. Do you have so, a skip? No skips on here, I have bro. A skip. I have one. Fourteen skip. songs of pure bliss. Man. I have one skip on this. No, guess what it is. Ten nine fourteen. That's when I only oh, skip man, on. I there, love bro. that song. No, He's spitting flames and, no. on there, bro. You're fucking I, bugging, bro, man. Bro, what do you mean? Like, go back and listen to this song. I did. You, 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 I've you, been on this song. I, I, I get you've been on it, but bro, like, put it again. I don't want to fucking tell you. Like, I listen. I want to start off with the vocals, bro. They're horribly mixed on this At song, all. bro. This song, like, this song sounds like a fucking clusterfuck. All right, like, it's really out of nowhere, and you're you're in your headphones and you're trying to make out what's the actual production on this, like. I was really trying to get into the song, and I really couldn't with every single Trap Soul is a classic, bro. It is a classic, it's but it has fucked. a skip. It has one There's skip. There's no skip. Yes, I, there is. I actually love the bravado that he brought in that song. It's cool, but it like it almost reminds me a bit of like YouTube rapping to a no. certain extent. You know, it's a it's a bit... It's, I don't know. Go back and listen to it. Maybe it's just me, but totally let's keep going disagree. on with this. But next up, we have Heaven or Hell by Don Tolliver and... Um, love this album, a big psychedelic trip. I love how spacey and airy Don Tolliver's vocals are and how they're taking full command on this album. Um, in terms of any skips, I was considering Had Enough, but I think it's a pretty solid song overall. It's just the fact that like it was already out for a year off of the Jack Boys album, so it kind of felt a bit weird placing it on here. But I have one skip. It's actually Spaceship. I, that's my only, yeah, that's my only skip. You too? Absolutely. In the context of the album, it really doesn't sound good as far as like a performance goes. Don Tolliver is a bit more like low energy. I don't like his vocals on the song whatsoever either. Production falls flat a bit. Check and, West didn't have a good yeah, performance like either. Yeah, even bro. towards the end, like check, like check West is going to have the outro on this song. And he doesn't perform whatsoever. Yeah. So let's keep going on with this. Heaven and hell, heaven or hell, excuse me, has a skip. But listen, let's go on to Atrocity Exhibition by Danny Brown. And this released back in 2016. It has a huge cult following behind it for a very good reason. And that's because you're going to find Danny Brown just absolutely like shit face, bro. Ripping through this whole fucking album. Laying down some of the best raps you'll hear of that year to one of the most unpredictable soundscapes that you could possibly find within a rap album. And... Not a single skip on this, bro. bro. This What's is a so classic right? album. It I is. love all of Danny's berserk vocal inflections. Also, him going through like this downward spiral of being on this drug binge. Um, the song concepts are actually super deep. If you listen to something like Ain't It Funny, crazy, really deep message behind that one. And I love the sonic landscape of having this post-punk feeling with all the samples he brought in. Masterfully crafted. Um, definitely a, sk a skipless album just because of the fast tempo that you have throughout this yeah, project. Like you can't even tell yourself, hey, I'm going to stop here because this is maybe too weird for me. Or maybe this is not good in the context of the album because... What is the context of Atrocity Exhibition? At least, you know, in my listenership, I went through this and I fell in love with the unpredictable factor. I fell in love with Danny Brown being unapologetic, bro, for all of his issues and everything he's been going through and bleeding that into his art, but yet putting it in such an organized and well-compact way. You know, even having Be Real on the album and having like a bit of a smoke break towards the end to kind of play down the tempo was awesome. Really dope being one of the best posse for cuts sure. of the last decade. Like, just too many highlights. Um, amazing album from Danny Brown, a classic in my eyes. But let's now move on to Ready to Die by Biggie. No and um, this is the GOAT album for me. I think that when you're looking at the way that he takes you through just a full cycle of life from birth to death, um, Biggie, I don't think anyone's ever sounded as dominant, um, dominant on a track list ever as much as Biggie sounds here. But I want to ask you this, all right? Yeah. You're in a scenario where you're in the house I you're in your room, with this. I know and your family's <laughs> in the other room, all right? You're, going with you're blasting Ready to Die on your speaker. You're jamming out to a classic album, and then Fuck Me interlude comes on, bro. What are you doing? Are you skipping that okay, track? Okay, listen, because this is the thing, though. <laughs> this is the thing. Let's go to my favorite album of all time. 
bro, there's pause, there's pause for porno on there. So I like, know. It, but if, it, are you? Like, but bro, let me, it's, it's am I skipping it? Am I gonna skip it's it? It's literally Biggie getting his bang on. Are you playing that fucking <laughs> interlude or not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I'll never sit down and like put it in my headphones or let's say have it ring through the house. But so, so the right to die has a skip. You're saying it. You're admitting. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I <laughs> guess in the context of the public, yeah. But like, it's so weird to fucking say. Yeah, I know. he's banging on the mic. But Fuck I mean, really? I, I, honestly, I don't even skip it, bro. <laughs> no, I, are you I'll let it ride no, out, bro. <laughs> even so bro, wrong. the, the <laughs> woman, <laughs> the <laughs> woman's <laughs> fucking dirty talk is actually hilarious, bro. Like, it's comedic. She's like, no, it is funny. It is funny to a certain extent, but no, you can't listen towards. Imagine being in the fucking bus, bro. You're sitting next to a grandmother and you got that ringing <laughs> off in your headphones. Come on, you know. So, listen, oh, I will man. say that, but. I don't want to consider an interlude a skip, you know. Like, I feel like that's a bit no weird. No skips for me, bro. I'll <laughs> run through it. Fuck All right, it. listen, I'm not, I'm not playing this in public, but I do say that Ready to Die does not have a skip on it. So that was hilarious. Let's keep going on with this. Let's go on to Care for Me by Saba, a beautiful, tight fucking concept album, bro. Beautiful, bro. There's not a single skip on this album quality all the way through yeah I, I mean you even have like what 10 songs on here regardless so wh what do you really want to skip out of this bro there's really yeah there's, a, there's everything mean, to give you and everything from, to gain you know from the intro all the way to heaven all around me like it's just it's a masterpiece of an album i have nothing else to say about it bro it's flawless oh, oh yeah and if you guys actually want to get into some good storytelling guys songs like prom king on here is absolutely incredible yeah. go to genius and have a field day with this album you'll really enjoy it but care for me no skips let's go into the sun's tirade by isaiah rashad and this is interesting because every Zay fan that I talk to either has this or Sylvia Demo as kind of like their favorites from him just because you either came up through one or the other to a certain extent maybe it was at like the peak of TDE where you just started getting into Isaiah's music you haven't gone through Sylvia Demo or you were really there you know for like the jump of Isaiah's career and you ripped through Sylvia Demo but the Sunset Raid has no skips for me bro I'm being completely I got honest. one skip what it's you not got? bad I have Don't Matter as a skip oh it's good though it's um, a good song I don't know I feel like the backing vocals on Zay are a bit out of place they kind of follow him like this shadow this track um, quick. I don't like that aspect of it also I feel like you kind of have like these extraterrestrial synths mixed up with this hard hitting drum pattern that just doesn't match Zay's rapping to me. But that's pretty much it, bro. I think it has what, like fucking 18 songs? 17 or songs on yeah, this. You yeah, you see? So, like, to by have George one skip. George is incredible. The song by George is absolutely yeah. sick. Titty and Dollar, Silk the Shaka, bro. Park, What's Wrong, Rope, Free Lunch, Fur the Squad, bro. Come on. Stuck in the one mud skip. with SZA. Yeah. One skip. I, I don't have any skips on it, but okay, let's end off this with The Diary by Scarface. Um, It's one of the first times you ever talk about this album on the podcast, and it was really nice bringing it into this segment just because it is a super underappreciated album when it comes to more of like the mainstream hip hop and what was going on in the 90s. And weren't you telling me that this was one of like Mike Dean's first yeah. uh, produced albums completely? My, Mike Dean, yeah, man. He was all over this project, and I love the funky synths that he brought on here, very G-Funk based soundscape. And to me, the diary is definitely on the level of a Quemini, of doggy style. Like it's one of those classic 90s albums that never gets enough love, but Scarface is going to keep you entertained all throughout just because of all the different perspectives that he's taking you through from being a cold-blooded killer to being the victim in a crime to being a witness. The storytelling is fucking immaculate. And he's even giving you moments where he killed someone, and then he's taking through the perspective of the, of the mother of that victim yeah. who's crying in the hospital. Like, who gives you this graphic imagery as vivid as Scarface? Absolute classic to me. Even the hooks are catchy as fuck on here on songs like G's. Flawless album, you can't even masterpiece. Skip, yeah, you can't even skip intro and outro just because it's such a fun listen from start to finish, so you want to go through that whole narration. But no skips on the diary, but guys, let us know in the comments section, where did we get it right? Where did we fuck up? And let us know, do you guys have any other album recommendations for this series that we're doing here at NFR Podcast? And as Lou said, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching this, and we'll catch you on the next one.